Any ideas what to do with these? There are loads of videos out there on what to do with book pages. Truckloads of them. But, but not a lot of ideas on how to deal with the whole thing. You know, if you do any sort of altering books or gutting books for journal making or whatever, you end up with loads and loads. I do a lot of altered books, so I have lots of loose book pages. As I said, there's truckloads of videos on how to use up those book pages. Pam, there is no shortage of that. What I'm here to do today is I've come up with a fun thing to do with the whole thing. Usually I work up until the time it's time to go to bed and then I shut my computer down and I try to go to sleep. Well, of course it's hours. And so this year I'm trying to take better care of myself and one of the ways I'm doing that is by shutting everything down an hour or better before I go to bed. And for that hour, just doing some, as Janet Nash often talks about, gentle journaling. And for me, that's a giant umbrella. That just means gentle crafting, something easy on the mind, not too taxing, not too difficult in, in terms of having, you know, scissors and paints and glues and books and measures and trimmer, you know, just a simple, something simple to do to unwind at the end of the day. And I was doing daily glue booking and I still do that regularly, but not every day. I decided I wanted to draw better to hone my sketching skills. And I've got, I've got stacks and stacks and stacks of beautiful, pricey, some of them sketchbooks and watercolor sketchbooks and whatnot, but I'm very precious about them. I'm not proud of that, but it is what it is. So I grabbed one of these Xbox. This I started last year. I started just some sketching with an ink pen. I had a little book of wildflowers, just a little Audubon type field guide, but a little thing. It's somewhere with my Stadler, my Stadler brand version of the Micron pen set. They're together somewhere. When I'm talking about trying to draw something, I need a reference of some sort. Although there's at least one in here, maybe two or three, I call mystery plants. I have no idea what it is. I did not have a reference. It's just a sketch, right? I didn't need. You're wondering, what is this? This is a dr three drill holes. I made a mini blind out of some old wallpaper that I painted. I made a blackout blind for my work area because the sunshine is obnoxious. So I needed to drill holes through it to string the blind. And this was, this was handy. And the whole point is I'm not too precious about this. But here's what I've been doing and here's the idea that I'm bringing to you. Use one of your old text blocks as a sketchbook. This I didn't even recognize. I thought it was something part of the book which it just seemed oddly placed and it just seemed out of, out of, out of place. But I did that a long while ago. I don't remember doing that but I can see that it, I, now I can yeah, see. I started March 1st daily doodling is what I was going to do. Just this kind of stuff. Just again, mindless, easy things. But last year I had started these grass things right around this time last year. I didn't date them though. It's always important to date your stuff because you're not going to remember. And I don't know why, but I thought it was a good idea to cut these pages. To make, I guess to make small, so that I, I would have two pages instead of just one. And to my brain, the thing had to be at the bottom of the page. And if I just put it up there, well, that's the top and the middle. So, but if I tear it, now it's at the bottom. You see, it has its own bottom, and, and now I can sleep well at night. Burn grass, cock's foot. And then I discovered Michelle at Creative Cove. And she has all these wonderful mushroom. She's she's a brilliant drawer, and that's she's one of the reasons I decided I wanted to hone my skills and to draw better because it just looks like so much fun. And she's got some printables on Etsy, and so I I downloaded a few of her printables and I used those as reference. I w she was doing just straight up mushrooms, not not fairy house mushrooms, but I know this is Creative Cove inspired as are maybe the weeds. I, I don't remember. 
which came first. More weeds. And they're just simple. I mean, they look, you know, from far away and on camera and it's somebody else's. It looks complicated. And it's not. It's scribbling. It's just scribbling. Then I decided I want to I want to learn to draw dogs well. And I wanted to start with the simplest, most basic, go back to basics and just start with simple shapes. And he's just so cute. His little nose. So cute. I want to think it's like a corgi with no tail or a bunny tail with fat butt. I did that. I started dating them. That was day two. So I was just going to draw dogs. It was just going to be dogs. But as things go, so this was last year. This was this year. Last year, the dogs are this year. And then, you know, slowly but surely getting a little more detailed, a little more complicated, more sketchy versus cartoony. And some days I'm just too tired and I, I don't do well. And so some of these are better than others. This one I did not have a reference for. It's just sort of a sort of a tree. New branches, new buds on a tree. This was a super quickie. Then I started adding color. I found that this size is a good use of these little Stabilo markers. These teeny tiny little micro markers. So I then threw some color in. I did a sketch last year, but this year I colored it in a little bit just to play with my markers. I'm going to fill this page with, as I draw a dog, I'll come over here and draw it again. And the whole idea is to fill this page eventually with lots of dogs. Hopefully they'll get better and more detailed as we go on. Now, if you watched my watercolor try me video, you saw me try my new travel field kit, this. So you can see I've made good use of it. Look at those nice divots in that paint. A lot of yellow going on. I just added, I just got some new purple and just added that recently. Uh, but I've been painting quite a bit and most of it has been in here. Now you hear me all the time crying and whining about, if you're going to do watercolor, do it on good paper. And that message is specifically for people who want to be watercolor painters. This stuff is junk journaling. This stuff is, is sketching and doodling and collage fodder. And to me, there's two very different things. One is sort of a fine art. It is a fine art. If you want to take up watercolor seriously, as in fine art, like Pat Norton and Helga Flower and mm -hmm. Bill Borden and Bob Adamite and, you know, real watercolor, real watercolor, get the good stuff and play with the good toys. These things, this, this is just something to unwind at night. And I don't need to do that on Arches watercolor paper. And I know how watercolor is supposed to work. I know how it works on good paper. So I can go back and deviate to something crappier. Now these came about inspired by these that I found in my stash not too long ago. And they're just, they start out as watercolor doodles and then you, you ink them up a little bit and the inking just brings them to life. And then you cut them out and then they're 10 times better. Like this looks kind of dull, especially without the ink and my little white Posk pen. But I think she's almost dry. Doesn't sound like there's much in there. I have some bigger ones, but this is a little flower. <laughs> but when you just start inking them up just a little bit here and there, boy, they just come to life. You can put a little, some little dew drops on there if you wanted to get fancy. This is one of those sort of, I think they're called, oh, I just lost it. It's a, is it a feather tulip? Peacock tulip? I don't know. No, no I can't even remember. But then, I didn't date this one, so technically it doesn't count. And I like leaving just a little bit of white around it too. So you can see that it's from book pages and anything that's on book pages just really just looks so cool. These are huge scissors. They're just regular size, but 
Put my fussy cutters are out in the kitchen. I'm gonna go all the way down and, and cut out that drill hole. <laughs> and uh, as I've said a million times before, I am a lazy, lazy crafter, and I just grab what's handy, which sometimes is to my detriment. It's a little bit much. We'll take a little bit more off there. Parrot. Parrot tulips? It'll come to me eventually. I'll do one of these real quick at the end of this video if you want to just, I mean, it's no great shakes, but since I have the brushes out, which by the way, work beautifully, they are really, really nice brushes. I'm so glad because I know my, I know they weren't cheap and they were a gift from my aunt and I'd hate to think I wasted her money by putting them on my wish list, but they're, they're very nice brushes. Doesn't that just come to life now? It's just, it's so much different than it was sitting here in this book. So these are one super easy way to, to play. And it doesn't have to be in a book. This is a great use of those loose pages that we most of us have piles and piles of. And I love these. I just think they're so much fun. Low stress, easy peasy. Love them. So I encourage you to try that. In the first video that I did when I showed these way back when, I remembered who I saw it from. Um, and I did give that person credit where credit was due because that's a big deal here. Boy, I can't remember who that was now. <laughs> that was a while, a long while ago. I'll flip you through the rest of this book and then we'll do a quick flower. This one, I just took a big fat Sharpie marker, big fat Sharpie marker, and did some doodling. Again, I didn't do this out of my head. I looked up, there was a video on my YouTube and I, I'm sorry, I don't know who it was because it was just random and they were doodling collage fodder. And so I just watched what she did and I did something like it. And this one I really like. Another way that I used my, my little teeny markers is I went in here and I colored all the things that had closed, like the O's, I colored the O's in, and the hole in the A, and the hole in the E, and the hole in the D, with each color through the rainbow and back to red, just for fun. To me, this is very much like neurographic art. You know, that small, tedious, concentrated, but not complicated work. I have to say though, I did this date, I did this a few days ago, and man, does it stink. It stinks up the whole book. I'll, I'll stick some bounce sheets in here so that it absorbs some of that Sharpie. And I'm working throughout the book. Look how far through this the drill marks went. All the way to page 88, 89, 90, 94. <laughs> Whoopsie. Oh well. I can make that part of a design. I can use that for something. It could be a borehole from a something that bores holes. It could be it could be a knot hole in a piece of wood. It could be just I could just ignore it as well. So I'm skipping around. I did some neurographic art, which I love to do neurographic art. Sometimes I just do the neur the line work and come back to it later and then do the neurographic part. If you don't know what neurographic art is, there's a whole pseudoscience behind it but in a nutshell you make these lines all through the page some people say it has to be one continuous line i don't like the way that looks so i do it my own way but here wherever there's a corner you want to round it out so there are no angles left when you're done problem of doing it jumping around like this is you can never find anything when you're looking for it but you take your pen or your marker and you just round out this isn't a very good one let me find another here's a better one you just round out all the angles so at the end of it there are no hard angles everywhere there was an angle 
you round it out you round it out round it out round it out and this one I did the sharpie line work and then went in with my little markers and rounded out all the hard angles oh I missed one right there so let's do that what color what color it's really tiny but right there Round it out. So simple. Did we miss any other? Now, after all that was done, I added these swirl marks. But as we're talking, now there's all these extra. So I may go in and round all those out. For me, it's really important to make it invisible so that you can't tell where one line stops and one line starts. So it's important to use the same or skinnier size pen tip. And you just, it puts you in this meditative zone. Perfect to unwind at the end of the night. Now again, there's lots and lots and lots of videos on how to do neurographic art. And everybody does it a little bit differently. One of the things they say too is that you, you pose a problem. Like a thing you want to unravel. Or a problem that you're mentally working on. You write that down and you put it on the back of your neurographic art. And then you do your neurographic stuff. And what that's doing is planting the seed and then letting your subconscious mind take the reins of it which is really a good idea and so when I can remember I do that I pose a question I don't usually write it on the back I just keep it in mind or I, I pose it and I let my mind take it over and then doing this tedious work just puts you in the zone after I did all the colored neurographic art then I went over with the markers and did something pretty over it just because I wasn't ready for bed yet so I just kept going this one is not not there yet. I don't like it at all. We'll get the big guns out. We'll get the big Posca pen out for this one. Maybe it just needs some love. This is a giant Posca pen. So I'm not going to do much with it because it's way overpowering. This is a Staples Duramark Permanent. And I did go over it with the Sharpie. You can see there's black lines there. And I didn't quite like that. So I'm going to add to it a little bit more. That's too small already. So my white one's drying out. My little one. But my big one is full. So what I'm doing is over here in the corner is I'm pumping it. And getting a little puddle of ink from the big one to the little one. <laughs> I don't know if it'll work or not. I don't see why it wouldn't. Well, we're going to try it. Yeah, I don't even know what to do with this mess. Oh, I like it better already. This one's not baited either, and I don't really like it, so... I know once I cut it out, it'll be way better. Normally, I don't use the heat gun to dry anything, but this is not watercolor. It doesn't have to move. It's acrylic paint. It's not going to move. It's not going to get better with time. So I have no problem hitting it with the heat gun and speeding up that process. And still, those dots from that big Posca pen are still wet in some places. So you're seeing the end first. At the end of the video, as I said, I'll, I'll drop in the watercolor. So you drop in the watercolor, you let it dry, you come back to it with your pens, you come back to it with the Posca, you let that dry, and then you cut it out. But you're seeing the process in reverse. But you're smart. I think you can, I think you can deal with that. You know, one isn't that great, but when you get a, a bouquet of them going on, well, what's not to love? Right? And just a little... A little summery thing going on. 
No, it looks way better. And that black now looks like a deep magenta versus it was just ugly at first. Just keep playing with it. Things do get better. So what else do we have in, in our little super cheap, no risk, nothing ruined little book? Kind of a form of neurographic art. It was going to be neurographic art. And then I just decided to paint in the colors instead. This is not dated because it's not done. It needs something else. I'm thinking maybe black stripes. I'm not sure yet, so I haven't finished. Another sketch. This was this year, Common Thistle. Mm -mm, not thrilled with it at all. The shape's off, blah, blah, blah. But I don't care. All I wanted to do was doodle. I wasn't setting out to do the world's most accurate botanical illustration of a common thistle. It was just to unwind at night, so I'm good with it. This is a page where I wash off my brush. This is my page of unwasted paint, kind of like my book of unwasted paint, but it's all right here because usually I have these two things with me, right? Or the night that I was, the nights that I paint, I have my little palette with me. I don't want to go in the studio and get my, my composition book of unwasted paint. So it's all contained right in here. So this is a page of un unwasted paint as is this. When there's a lot of paint in my brush but I'm done, I come over here and I, I put it down in form of a triangle. As I'm wetting it down, I use it up here. Another watercolor. I've done the black ink, but now I have to come in with the Posca. And just super simple. Doesn't have to be accurate. In fact, the looser, the better. And here I just want some suggestions. This bright white, the white white makes the dark darks pop. It makes everything stand out a little bit more. Super simple. And if I forget to zoom this, remember if you're on a mobile device, you can always zoom, pinch in just like you do with your photographs. You can zoom in on YouTube. It's so cool when you're watching somebody paint or draw or something and they've got the full, you know, you can't see anything because they're so far away. You have control of that. You can zoom in and just like you do when you're looking at pictures, you just zoom it in and zoom it out. Very cool. I use it all the time when I'm watching videos. This one looks like it has petals from two different flowers, and that's all right. That's perfectly fine. It's just a suggestion of a black-eyed Susan, or just a suggestion of something that looks like a black-eyed Susan. Going over where I already went with the Posca, because it's, it's seeping in a little bit, and I, I want it to be a little bit brighter. I'm not going to cut that one out. I have dated it, and I, I like it, so I'm going to keep it in this little book. Doesn't that just bring it to life? Super fast, easy peasy. Oh, I forgot a leaf. This one needs some water, some bright white too. Be careful that I don't junk it all up now. Because I enjoy it so much, I did several. Another Sharpie doodle that I'm going to do something around with color. I'm not sure what just yet. This was an old doodle and I painted it had this weird messy frame around it and then I just took that was last year but this year I took my pen my marker this is one of the ones I got for Christmas that razor pilot razor I think it is yeah, inked pilot. in a wooden frame it look, looks kind of like old barn wood watercolor it has a little bit of black ink I'm waiting to do the Posca pen that's my next step on that one another inspired by Michelle at the Creative Cove's these you know i use them as a starting off point i try not to copy them i can't copy them these are hers and we don't draw the same we don't hold our pencil the same and so even if i tried to copy this exactly it doesn't come out that way it doesn't and i'm not going to sweat it i'm just using this as a jumping off point where did she put the windows what kind of door is this mushroom spotted or is it striped etc what kind of plants to use around just so I don't have to think about it myself. I've let somebody else do the thinking and I just have some fun with my pen or my marker or whatever. Uh, these are also her sketches, I believe. Uh, 
some of her flowers also available on her Etsy and that's kind of where I started. She just makes it look so easy. She draws really well. More mushrooms from her kit. More neurographic art coming soon. More mushrooms from her kit. Tiny, tiny little neurographic. Boy, that was that was teeny tiny. These I'm going to put Posca pen doodles on. Again, I did these at night, so they had to dry. And I usually do them in the kitchen, and my art stuff's in the studio. And so that's why these are... These remain undone. Another way that I wash off my brushes, I don't waste the paint, I just do stripes until the paint runs out. There's a lilac in here. I I should have marked the pages before I started. We have a saying in my family, dumbass, that's what we say all the time. <laughs> and it uh, fits. So you can see watercolor, let it dry, and then I came back and I doodled on it with ink. Now, do a little bit of Posca pen on it. And I like where the whites are already here on the page, so I'm just going to emphasize those already, where they already are, I should say. You can go about this different ways. You can just scribble it like I did the black ink. You can kind of draw out some individual flowers. here and there because again it's just a suggestion it's not a scientific accurate depiction of a lilac it's just supposed to say hey that looks like a lilac <laughs> it's nothing you know too terribly accurate and those whites just help those darks just pop off the page and I'm not focusing on which direction is my light coming from and where are my shadows being cast? And it's, again, I'm. this is not a watercolor, it's a sketch and it's something to do for fun and I don't need the aggravation. One thing I will try to avoid in doing this is hard angles and hard lines. Because nature is soft and curved and hard lines are not. We're gonna use my new brushes today. I'm gonna use my, my little cups today. Desk is a mess, just in case you were wondering. I'm left-handed, all my stuff goes on the left-hand side. I don't have running water in my studio, so I keep a bottle of water in here with a tiny little bit of alcohol to keep it from going nasty. So I don't have to get up and run to the bathroom or run to the kitchen to get some water. I just have water right here, right handy. Two, count them. Two waters, water wells. Why? Say it with me. One is for clean, one is for dirty. I've seen people who actually have two jars of water going, but they're both dirty. Like they said, well, I learned that you're supposed to have two jars of water and have no idea why you need two jars of water. One is for clean, one is for dirty. Now, this is not a huge painting. This isn't a giant anything. Oscar pens are dry. I'll go back and pick another page somewhere back here it's not a huge canvas so to speak but i don't want to use a teeny tiny brush i want to use a decent sized brush i'm going to use this i think it's a six or an eight it's an eight because the larger your brush the the freer you are also holding your if you hold it really tight like a pencil and you get nose to nose with it, you're, you're doing tight detail work. But if you're doing loose stuff, back up your hand, use your arm, not your fingers when you paint. Again, this is just, this is just, you know, sketching and watercolory stuff. But if you find your stuff is too tight, well, loosen up on your brush. I'm going to get my, my brush good and wet to start with. And I really like the lilacs and I have new purple, so let's use some new purple. One of the reasons I love tube watercolor is because of this neat feature. I put this in, oh, maybe a week ago when I got the tube of paint and I've not used it since. It's just been sitting there drying out. And I just dipped, I got a wet brush and I just dipped into that paint and look how yummy and juicy that is instantly, like immediately. I'm going to start a new page of unwasted paint. 
so I don't have to just rinse all that out. Go to my dirty water. Put too much water in this little well. Whoopsie. But this stuff, because I did not remember to spray it and let it set while I was doing the flip through, these all need now to be worked up. They're hard. They'll still, there's still paint. Oh, I still have quite a bit of purple in there. There's still paint, but there's, it's mostly water because the pigment takes a while to loosen up where, because these are pans, they're, they're dry, dry, dry. They're baked and dried before they ever come to you or tubes come to you and they're creamy and they stay creamy even though they dry out. They never get as dry as the pans. And that's one of the reasons I prefer tube watercolor. All right, so I'm gonna just take my tube purple because, because it's wonderful. There's some red here on the palette. I don't know if you can still see that. There's a tiny little bit of red there. I'm just gonna use that up. I want a nice light purple because in watercolor you work from lightest to darkest. So I'm just gonna take a pretty watered down purple and start making something shaped like a lilac. Remember that watercolor dries back 20%. So it's pretty dark here, but when it's dry, it's gonna look quite a bit lighter. And I'm using the dirty water because it's purple. It doesn't matter right now. It'll matter when I start mixing colors. It matters a lot. And I just have those tiny little, tiny little ones at the tip. They get tinier and tinier. It's almost like an upside down grape clump. While that's drying out a little bit, I don't want it to dry completely, but it's too wet right now to go back into it. Getting clean water, cleaning off my brush again. Because now I want to do some green. Greens are tricky. We get a lot of tube greens and not one of them not one of those colors is found in nature. <laughs> uh, so every tube green needs to be altered in some way, toned down with its complementary color red, grayed out with a Payne's gray or a palette gray, because you want your greens to look natural for the most part. So this is fun trying to do the unwasted paint and the picture, but it can be done. Oh, I just stuck my finger in it. Nice. Well, then we'll spatter it at the end and it'll look like I meant to do that. So that dried pretty fast because this paper is old and it's uh, pretty absorbent. So I'm going into my purple and getting a little bit darker color. There's some orange over here on the palette, just a tiny bit of leftover something or other. And I'm just going to deepen that purple a little bit. I'm going to go back into the places I was and into some places I wasn't. More purple, tiny little bit of orange, just to keep it consistent. With that tiny bit of orange in there, it gives you almost a magenta color and some lilacs are that deep, deeper purple rather than the lilac lilac. And of course there's white lilacs all different shades of lilac lilacs. It looks too much like a witch's hat. It's too symmetrical. Lilacs aren't like that. They've got stuff over here and they've got parts over here and some down here. So I can water this out a little bit and make another light layer. I'm leaving bits of white in between because lilacs aren't solid. Like even hydrangeas are pretty solid, but lilacs aren't. Not all of them anyway, some can be. I'll let that dry a little bit. I'm gonna blot it off. I want it really, really dry. And I'm gonna take a dry brush, a thirsty brush, and I'm gonna go into this green and lift some out.
just to give a tiny little suggestion of roundness. Again, nice and dry, so I'm going to get a little bit of dark purple here. This is dioxanine purple, dioxanine violet, excuse me, Windsor Newton Professional Quality. Nice and dark. And I'm going to go in. So I went in with some light, and then when I, I went in with some medium that looked dark until we added this dark. Here you can kind of start to make a few lilac petal shapes if you want. In some places where it's nice and dry, they're gonna stay. In some places where it's still kind of damp, they're gonna fade. And either way is fine. It's just a suggestion. Nice, nice tip on these brushes. I really like it. They, they hold water well. They move paint well. I, I, I'm really happy with these brushes. Again, yep, I know I'm going into my dirty water, but it's purple and I want it grayed out a little tiny bit. It's okay if it's grayed out a little tiny bit. If I'm going to start using yellow, which I will here in just a few minutes, I want it a nice clean brush with nice clean water. Got to know the rules in order to break them responsibly and well. Break them responsibly. That's beautiful. I break rules, but I, I do it responsibly. Well, as long as you do it responsibly, we're good. Important not to get too, too fussy. Again, this is just a sketch. It's just something fun to do. I want it to be full and round, but I don't want it to be perfect. Sometimes the quicker the better. Okay, clean out my brush. I'm going to go into my darker green just a little bit and put it into the other green. You see, whoo, she's that bright. I probably can't see how bright that green is, but it's bright. So I'm going to tone it down. I'm even going to add a little bit of my purple to it. A lilac's stem is a greenish brown it's almost it's a cross between a flower stem and a tree branch so i'm just going to add a little bit of that darker color in there i put it in and now i've got a, a wet i shouldn't say wet very damp brush and i'm just going to lift some of it out again And all that's doing is adding another layer. And that's what watercolor is. It's just layering and layering and layering. And that's why you want to use good watercolor, even for this kind of stuff, because you want to, the cheaper stuff has so much filler in it that when you layer, it just gets chalkier and chalkier and chalkier. If, if you're laying paint on top of paint, on top of paint, on top of paint. Now I've seen people who are very good at watercoloring they're not layering, they're mixing on the paper, but they're not layering. And that makes a big difference. So it depends on what you want to do. All right, I said I was going to do some yellow, so I'm going to grab... And I know this is nice, I th well, I thought I, I wasn't paying attention. Maybe it's not, I don't know. We're going to wipe that off, dip it in the clean water, dip it in the clean water. Now I know it's a nice clean brush. Then go into my yellow. A little bit of that golden yellow too, that warmer, so it's a mixture of both. And I'm using the clean water to add water to my yellow because that will gray my yellow right down. Purple and yellow are complementary colors. Now lilacs have a tiny, tiny little yellow center just a teeny tiny little when they're fully open it's so tiny so i'm just going to suggest some of those here and then try to work around them as i add a, another little bit of a layer to the to the lilac oh i forgot to do my unwasted paint trick See how fast that water gets yucky because it's so tiny, but 
We have clean water except for the yellow that fell to the bottom. That's funny. I'm going to go back into my green mixture here. I don't think there's enough though. I'm going to take the bright green and the sap green, more sap green, and this can be gray because I want to dull that down. I'm going to take some of the purple from before, some of the purple, whisper of red, maybe orange. Oh, that's a lot of orange. What I'm going for here is an, a brownish gray to add to my stem. Some of that sap green, a little bit of that brown mixture. And I'm just gonna suggest in some of those white places I'm gonna add some of this green to suggest the stem is running through it. And then finally go into my dirty water and get my dark, dark purple. It's okay that I'm using the dirty water because my color is so dark and it's okay if it dulls it down a little bit. Anyway, almost pure paint going back in here and there with some really dark purples. Notice where I'm holding my brush. I'm not getting down here and detailing it nose to nose. I'm I'm eased up on it because I want this loose. And some more water. And I if I accidentally go over my green or accidentally go over my yellow, it's alright. It's alright. really want some of those super dark bits in there because that makes the light ones and the medium ones really stand out so it gives your whatever you're working on depth We were going to spatter this one because I stuck my fingers in it. Spatter everything else while I'm at it. When I taught watercolor in the face-to-face old-fashioned brick and mortar in a building classes <laughs> or my slogan was always come throw paint with me because we get paint everywhere let's kind of mess those up so that that one looks on purpose so now that has to dry before i can do the ink work and the pen work uh the pen work with the marker or the posca pen i believe this is oil paint in here, and oil and water don't mix. Posca pens do not like water, so now you have to wait for it to dry, but then you've already seen me ink it, so you know what's next. Like I said, you saw the process in reverse, and so there. Is it is it fantastic right now? No, it's not, but it will be. I'll put the details in with my pens and my Posca, and if it if it doesn't just sing on the page, well, then I'll cut it out, and it will sing off the page. Well, that was fun. I hope you enjoyed this, this video. If you're looking for color mixing tutorials, how to get to know your palette, as we speak, I am putting that on my Patreon page. Color trials are coming soon if they're not already up. Take a look at that if you want to know more about color mixing and how to get to know your palette and how to avoid mud, muddy doll colors. In the meantime, you go love up your Beasleys.
because you never know what tomorrow's gonna bring. My take at the lake, out for now. <laughs>